it's November 1st. We're in Nebraska. We haven't showered. We got out of the tree last night at dark in South Dakota. Drove to Nebraska. Slept in the vehicle. On a piece of public, we didn't want to get beat in here. So we slept out at the trailhead and we're in here. Can't say we had a clean entrance. We did jump a couple of deer, but we're hunting a brand new spot. We're on a big ridge top. Um, we're surrounded by timber. We're right on the elbow of where this ridge kind of horseshoes. There's virtually no wind up here right now. Our thermals should be rising. We speed scouted this a while back and uh, been running a cell cam in here. There are a couple good bucks in here. But uh, we'll see what happens. It's November 1. Took us a while to get set up. We bumped some deer, but anything can happen. She's getting bumped, isn't it? had a pretty close encounter, really close encounter. We had a, probably a three-year-old buck, I'm gonna guess. <coughs> Came off of the private here to the north. Came right at us, got to about 35, and paralleled us down on this hill. We climbed to this tree in the dark, didn't really trim anything. We thought it'd be pretty open, but he paralleled us and came up behind us and actually bedded down like 35 yards from us. Probably only laid there for five minutes, got back up, and he came down this ridge at like 20 yards. The one good lane, I would have really had to lean out around the tree, and I just, I don't think it would have been a smart shot. And then he kinda paralleled us back down this ridge 
And of course, my one lean, I needed him to come about two yards closer because I got two limbs about that size covering his vitals. But anyway, he kind of worked back off of this ridge down into the next valley. Pretty cool buck. He had a nice five point side on his left and, and like a big spike. Maybe a two point on his right side, but we've been a nut for probably 50 consecutive days, damn near. And that's the closest encounter we've had, so it's a kind of a tough pill to swallow. That's about, that's about it. I mean, other than the deer that we bumped this morning coming in, we're just, uh, at least I'm not happy with this tree that we're in. It's kind of a cluster. And uh, we uh, shake it pretty good when deer are rolling in and we're trying to spin around in the tree. This tree's kind of wobbling. And Fat, that doe looked right up at us and the wind was not in her favor so I just don't like getting picked out by deer so I'm uh, making the executive decision that we're going to climb down and uh, did you hear that? Deer just coughed. Maybe, maybe we're not going to It's the evening of November 1st. We sat this morning until about 1 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock, and we just weren't happy with our tree. Um, just felt like we were sticking out like a sore thumb. The tree was, wasn't real big. It was moving when we were moving. So we decided to uh, get down and uh, do a little scouting. We are back on the same ridge that we hunted this morning, but we are probably 150, 200 yards south of where we were. There's a ton of big buck sign on this ridge. We had that encounter this morning with a pretty decent buck, but uh, we're pretty optimistic about this spot. There's, there's a sign everywhere, rub, scrapes, and uh, it's just perfect for cruising. We've got a north-south ridge in front of us and an east-west ridge right, right where we're at and it kind of intersects everything. So the plan is to stick it out here until dark and then uh, leave most of our stuff in the tree and then we're going to come back here and sit all day tomorrow. The weather's perfect. It's November 1st. It can happen at any time.
considering we were, <laughs> we were only here for about an hour, hour and a half. We had a doe and a fawn. Uh, they weren't together. The fawn came through first. Um, kind of wheeled in front of us here at about 27, 28 yards and went down the hill towards the field. And then uh, probably a half hour, 40 minutes later, a, a lone doe came through. But I uh, feel really good about this spot. I, I think this is where we need to be. We're going to have awesome weather tomorrow morning. It's supposed to be super cold. And yeah, sunshine all day, low wind. So the plan is we are going to leave a bunch of stuff in the tree and slip in here tomorrow morning, climb up in and go for the best and sit all day. Uh, these bucks got to... They got to start moving. Uh, we had that buck come through at 10 o'clock this morning, so I mean that tells you right there that it's it's starting to get good. just acquired a new target here in the last half hour. We had a piebald buck come past us down below. Oh, he snuck through the thick stuff, went up the hill, and he came back through. Unfortunately, JP wasn't able to get him on a camera because he was in some pretty thick stuff, but he's like 50% white. I mean, just a badass deer. He's only a year and a half old, but I don't care if he, if he comes back through here, I am lighting him up. So, another target buck in the area. Weather's still just perfect. Calm, sunshine, and cold. Hoping for some of that midday action here. seen a few does this afternoon and laid eyes on the elusive piebald again. Actually two different times. JP picked him up in the bottom and then that was probably an hour and a half ago and then we just seen him here a couple minutes ago. About 60 yards. I don't know if we got any video of him yet or not. He's been in some pretty thick shit but solid day. I think we've seen six different bucks and probably about just as many does and fawns. Hey guys, welcome back to another First Light in the Field. It is the 4th of November today. We are hunting in southern Iowa and I just wanted to talk to you guys about the Solitude Insulated Vest. This is the vest that I wear pretty much from the end of October all the way through the month of November. Uh, it's a great option. 
couple uh, feature rich options that I really enjoy is the harness pass through. Um, I can run my harness underneath this vest and slip it right out the back and uh, you don't even realize that you have a harness on. It's got very well placed pockets. You can easily slide your hands in and out of the pockets. A couple chest pockets, great for range finders, cell phones. Um, and this thing just, it's awesome because I don't like the bulk on my arms. I'm a vest guy and until it gets extremely cold. I don't jump up to the sanctuary. I rock this solitude vest pretty much October and all the way through November. It's just a great piece to have in your kit. Uh, if you have kit. Morning. Here you got. Uh, just taking a shower. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 5th. November 5th. We are heading into a virgin spot this morning. Pretty excited about it. A little overtired, so you can't really feel my excitement right now, but be jacked up here shortly when we get in the tree. We are essentially surrounded by bedding this morning, and uh, there's a couple good bucks in there that we know of, and I'm sure there's more running around that we don't know of. It's gonna be an exciting sit. Uh, first time in this piece, hunting shed hunted it and walked all over it but uh i've never hunted it especially in november so it could be could be good the weather's pretty pretty good uh mid 30s right now 10 mile an hour wind out of the south these deer should move it's supposed to be sunshine cup of coffee and we're out of here november 5th First morning of the year in Iowa. Hunting a new spot. Just got permission on it this year. Shed hunted it last, or this spring, and then uh, came in here and turkey hunted it and kind of tried to figure it out a little better. We knew the access was going to be tough. Um, it's a lot of CRP in here, a lot of bedding. And sure enough, we jumped a pile of deer on our way in. As soon as we crossed the creek, there's a group of, I think, eight of them that I could see eyeballs all laying together. And there was two here, three there, two there. We probably jumped 15 to 20 deer on our way in here. Deer running around, blowing everywhere. Just cracking daylight here. And uh, we got a doe and a fawn out in the CRP to the south of us. Hopefully these deer calm down, but the, the good thing is deer can roll in here from anywhere, so. shooter right in those cedars see those cedars in the middle of the CRP that's our big boy he's standing right there
coming right to us, right down the edge. Comes. Get ready. Back. edge right to us <sighs> she cut in she cut into this tree row sooner than I was thinking she was gonna sure enough he came busting out I had ranged a few things down here but I did not range the trail they were on and I was so rushed I didn't think I had time to range because he was running after her. and I guessed him for about 22 23 I shot my left and right was good. I was a, a touch low. But we just watched the footage back. My arrow did something funny when it hit him. If it would have blown th straight through, I think it would have hard shot him. But uh, anyway, he wheeled up onto the hill and blew. So that's not a good sign. After seeing the footage, I don't know what my arrow is going to look like. It looked like it deflected somehow. <sighs> Pretty sick. It's 20 to 12. We tracked that buck for, let's say, 250 to 300 yards. It was tough tracking. Decent blood for a ways. Then he would get into the CRP and tough to see the blood. Then he'd get back down to where there's leaves and we'd find the blood and find a speck, find a speck. He took us all the way up to the end of the thick stuff. <clears throat> We kicked him up. JP seen him. I didn't see him. But uh, he said he was moving pretty good. So I think it's a non-lethal hit. But had to check. 
like I said with the shot, I figured he was either dead right away or he wasn't going to die. And I don't think he's going to die. I feel like we gave it our best effort. Um, we're going to pack out of here. Be a tough pill to swallow. We got a few days off. Ain't going to make uh, sitting around much easy. I think it makes sitting around very easy for the next few days. But that's bow hunting. If it hasn't happened to you, you haven't hunted long enough.